that uh, the recursive solution for the binary search tree traversal can be something like uh, say if we consider a uh, in order uh, recursive solution then it will be something like uh, void if we have some function name say in order then obviously you have to write the pointer and here we will first uh, go to the left part because you know if we have a tree something like this then before printing this a we must go to the we must print this left one so that's why we will go i'm sorry i mean if this t is not equal to null then only we will uh, go to the left one i mean first so we will have a recursive call here free pointer t and then after printing this part then I will come back to this, this in order function and I will print this current t that is where I am pointing that is this one so I mean some print t data and then we will have in order function again for go to I am sorry what I am writing it should be t right it is sorry t left and here it should be t right <clears throat> so first i'll go to left then i will print the middle one i mean the root one and then i will go to the right so to print the right subtree now we have seen that depends on the traversal if instead of in order it was pre-order then this print statement will come before this first in order function i mean first function call right if if it is post order that means first the two function call will be there then the print function will be done so depends on the order of the data that i want to print my order of function call and print statement will vary right so and we have seen that uh, our recursive recursion tree that is actually generated in uh when we write this type of code now question is that if someone asks you that uh, i don't need any recursive solution and uh, give me something uh, non-recursive solution then what to do i mean uh, so i mean today we will actually try to explore the <clears throat> you can say non-recursive traversal of BST so before we realize what to do and how we can do let's take a short binary search tree as an example so that we can realize uh, how uh, what are what are, what are the what are required for the non recursive traversal technique I mean, if we have a BST something like, say, uh, Suppose it's something like this. So we have a BST something like this. And let's take the address of this BST. 
the address of this node actually is say suppose address of this node a is 100 this one is say 200 this one is say 300 this one say 400 500 and 600 so we will start from here because this is the root node this is the root node and this is uh, uh, suppose we are writing as t okay so <clears throat> that means now if i ask you that what will be the pre-order traversal what you will say you will say obviously i will start from here i will start from here this one <coughs> say print uh, a first then I will print uh, B then I will print C then D then E then F it's very easy to write say. right so with respect to this order if we look at the address that is accessed for this traversal was something like 100 then we have visited the data of address 200 then we have visited at data address of 400 then 500 then 300 then 600 now you see in case of previous situation when we had a recursive solution we didn't need to bother about this one because this was done recursively i'm just printing i mean i'm just concerned about my node and i'm just giving the responsibility of printing my left subtree and right subtree to one of my clone i'm not taking responsibility of that that's actually recursively defined over there so that's why the task or the responsibility become very easier but when we have a we need to have a non recursive solution it means that entire responsibility is mine to print the of all the nodes at that time we have to somehow you know determine some technique so that we can basically follow this particular order of accessing the memory locations so that the pre-order can be printed in this correct way the question is that since we know that this particular connection between different nodes are not in two way i mean it's a one way connection right something like this basically because we have seen in the definition of a node that our node contain a data part and the address of its left subtree or left node and address of its right node that's all but it doesn't contain the address of its parent so that's why it is you know if you go somehow 100 to address 200 by the way i mean uh, the order that i have written is not a linear address you see what i mean that 100 to 200 it is okay 200 to 400 it is okay but 400 to 500 this part is directly not possible because 400 to 500 has no direct connection similarly 500 to 300 is not possible but 300 to 600 is again possible now question is that 400 to 500 then how i will go what i can do in this part i can modify this particular line somehow something like i can say that i will go back to 400 to 200 and then 200 to 500 again so that means you see, I had to revisit this 200 again 
just for you know reaching this 500 address unless I cannot reach similar thing if you want to go from 500 to 300 you don't it's not possible 5 to 3 there is no rule what you can do you can go back to 200 again and from 200 you can go back to 100 again and from 100 you can go to 300 so since this direct connection is not possible somehow i have to you know take a you know take a long journey but in this situation you see that some address needs to revisit again although we have printed the data of the address but we have to visit that somehow i have to go back so since it's a non-recursive solution then how i will go back some that mean that mean one thing is sure before you jump from one address to another address you must remember the address from where you have jumped so that if needed you can go back i mean we have seen that <coughs> we are jumping from 100 to 200 but if we don't somehow store this address 100 then it is not possible to you know go from 500 to 300 similarly from 200 to 400 when we are jumping if we don't store this address 200 it is not possible to you know revisit this 500 from 400 now question is that what i require to store is it a simple variable i mean i mean how many memory locations is required and what will be the data structure for storing this amount this kind of you know memory locations let's take a um, let's do one thing let's extend this tree a little bit so that we can realize much more i mean to do one thing let's write uh, some more uh, notes over here say g h okay and suppose something like this okay so that mean uh, and suppose the address of this nodes are given something like uh, it's obviously 700 and it's 800 so naturally the pre-order part will uh, become uh, it will change a little bit and according to that this address will get changed but i'm not interested for showing how the, this part is changing because you know that you know if we introduce two more nodes then what will be the change in the pre-order that is not my point my point is that i mean we have we know that uh, obviously we have one way connection in the in between from c to g and h individually but here for drawing the drawing these two nodes why i have drawn my point is that before we store before we store some 100 or 200 or 400 whatever you see if you compare at least between 100 200 and 400 one thing we can say that i will start january from a so as we have seen from this situation that before jumping to a location i need to store the address so I need to store address 100 first because we start from here. Now from A where I will go, I will go to B. Fine. So uh, somehow I have uh, say memory location. Suppose some memory location. Okay, let's take a set of memory locations where I am storing these addresses. Okay. Some type of array you can say. Suppose. So what I have done, I have stored 100 first. Fine and then i have jumped from a to b and then i have realized that this is uh, there is left i mean i mean i have printed this b and 
I have something in the left of the again, so I should jump to C. Before we jump, as we have seen in previous case, I will store this address 200 to this array. So let's store 200. Right. Now see, from B to C, when you are jumping, you have stored this 200. Similar thing from C to G. So 400 will get stored. Right. Now see, from G to there is nothing basically. It's null, right? So let's take a situation, something like when we realize that we have to stop, obviously when we will stand on a location which is null, not before that. So when you are standing on this node, you, do, can, you, you cannot say that you should stop. Better what you will do? You will store the 700 and you will go left and you will find that you are standing on something called null. And then you will realize I should not continue. You should go back. Now where you will go back? You should go back to G. Right. Now how you go back to this node? Because you, you have this address stored in this particular memory location, uh, some memory location name I am I mean the name obviously will be there. I am not interested for the small things. So some mem memory location name is there and where you have stored this 700. So you can easily take this memory address from this location and you can go back to G. And then what you will do? I can, you, you, you will think that maybe something will be there in the left, I mean right side of G. So you will start jumping to the left, right again. And before you jump, you will store this 700 again. As uh, the technique, the logic you have for you. What I mean to say <coughs> is that when you are jumping from A to B, you are storing this 100. Then from B to C, you are storing this 200. Because, I mean, one thing we have realized that if, if we don't store these addresses, it is not possible to come back to the address because we are not using recursive solution. That's why I have stored 200. Then from B to, I mean, from C to G, I have stored this address of C 400 over here somehow. Then from C to G, I mean, sorry, from G when you are standing, you know, you know, when you will write a program, it is obviously will be in some loop, some loop, somehow in a form of loop. I am not going in detail what exactly the loop is, we have not still realized, but we can see, we can say one thing that since we have to repeatedly, you know, printing some data and jumping and storing some address, that's why we have a repeated things many times, that's why maybe there will be a form of loop. So within this loop, what are the jobs? To print the data, to store this address of the node before we jump to some memory location, then to go to the left child or right child. Depends on that, depends on the logic, right? Now, <clears throat> after jumping, when you will, you know, you will find, after jumping, if you find that you are standing on a point which doesn't contain any node, what you will realize that you actually crossed the leaf node also, right? So that means you should not continue, you should go back. You have crossed the last level of the, you know, the last level of the tree. So that means, I mean, if we, I mean, draw the tree again, let's draw this tree, I mean, sorry, let's draw the, uh, this part again. Suppose, uh, okay. So let's <coughs> a long uh, memory location. Let's take so. Some set of memory addresses there and we can see that we will store 100 first. I mean, uh, 
100 will get stored first then i will jump from a to b then before we jump from b to c 200 will get stored fine then from c to before jump from c to g you can see that 400 will get stored then from g when you are standing on g you cannot stop because you are standing on some valid node so what you will do you will blindly jump to a after printing this value g this one you will basically that means when you are jumping we, before you jump you are printing so let's print also so you have printed this a then you have also printed b then you have also printed c and then you are standing on g right so you are you will you will print this g fine and then what you will do you will jump to the left because you still don't know right you are blind at that point so you will jump and before jumping you will store this address of g 700 fine and now question is that where you will jump you will jump to somewhere which is null here i have nothing to actually stand nothing to uh, you know where you can i mean stand basically you can assume in this way so what you will do you will see that i have now no place to stand so what you will do you will see you will realize that you should go back because you have crossed the last level of the tree now question is that how you will go back it is not a recursive solution that you have given some responsibility to other clone and that control from the clone will come back to you it's not something like that it's happening in a single function that's why you if you want to if you require to go back that is the reason we have stored these addresses so basically you can say you can assume in this way that you are pushing this addresses in a particular memory location right and then you are taking back this memory address whenever required so now you require because when you are when you came here and you want to go back to g again you need to know that what was the address of g you don't remember you cannot remember because the t variable that is actually having these different addresses so initially t con t was 100 then t was 200 then t was 400 then t was 700 and when you still go back to the left t become null and that's why you want to return back now you cannot store more than one value in a t and that's why you require a memory location something like this from where you can take back the address in the t again for example 700 you want to take back so that you can go back to g again that's why you should delete some this 700 because you have already taken this i mean uh, taken this address from this address pool and t will be reinitialized by 700 again so t is now pointing in g but you see you don't need to print this one because you have already printed g but what you can do you can try to go right side you still don't know that there is nothing in right side so what you will do you will go to right again but before you go to right in the same way you should store this address of g so that means again you will basically store this 700 and then you will go to right but again you will see the same situation there is a null there is nothing to do so what you will do you want to go back to this g again because there is nothing so you if you want to go back again you need to you know delete this one from this address pool and you can go fine now you are standing on here and you see there is nothing you have visited both sides and there is nothing and now you should print h right after g you should print h but how you can do that you cannot do directly because there is no direct path as we have seen in this situation that's why what you can do you should go back through this c because c have a direct connection with h so that means you should revisit c first from g you should revisit c but how you can do that how you will know the address of this c you can know from this address pool so you can take back this 400 
here from here and then you can uh, come here and then you see that uh, you will uh, basically what you will do you will uh, you can jump to h so what you will do you will store this 400 again and then you will jump to h and we'll do the same thing i mean you will print this h and store this 800 before you jump to the left of h which is null again and same thing will happen that we have seen for g now my point is that in this example try to look the or you know the order of storing this address and deleting from this address pool 100 was stored first then say 200 then 400 then 700 but you see 700 deleted first then 400 was deleted and one more thing that means in this particular address pool the way of storing the storing the address and the deleting the address is happening in this fashion right and there is a data structure which can follow this rule what we call stack that means this address pool is a stack basically so you are pushing this address in a stack and whenever required you are popping out from the data from the stack that's all right so now how to push into the stack and how to pop from the stack you don't know you, you know that so i am not going i will not go in detail of the push strategy and pop strategy of a stack but what i will say that let's now find the solution considering that we have a stack of address in our hand So now question is that what is the limit of this stack? Obviously, it's not possible to determine. So just consider that we have a enough amount of memory location in a stack so that there will be no overflow. Okay. Um, and one more thing is that uh, what will be that as I told you that I need some form of loop so that this thing happens uh, many times as I mean till uh, the end of the tree uh, so what will be the criteria for stopping in the loop still uh, you know let's we have to find out that okay we have to find out that so <clears throat> question is that from where we will start so that mean thing is sure that in case of non-recursive non traversal of BST, let's take this as a pre-order as an example, I need a stack. Without stack, you cannot continue. That's for sure. Now, if you say you want to use, say, uh, for example, in order, if you want to say in order, then uh, what will be the criteria or what will be the is, is the stack required over there in case of if you want for in order suppose uh, then in that case first all these addresses will get stored in the stack i mean if we consider the memory location where we will store the addresses first we will store 100 then we will store 200 in it's in order right so left one will be printed first then 400 then 700 
then the 700 will be popped out then this 400 will be popped out and 800 will get stored i'll come here right then 800 will get i mean after this 800 will get popped out and i'll directly go to 200 but 200 will be popped out uh, and 500 will get stored so you see in this case also the strategy is almost same just what you will see in case of in order the difference is that the order of printing the data and pushing and popping may be different than the pre-order right so we will see this order of the, i mean the i mean uh, the corresponding algorithm or the code in the next class